All right, let's start out our adventure with Adobe Spark Video with a little tour. Um, so this is the landing page or the dashboard page once you're ready to create. And you can see that as you build it, as you add pages to it, those will fill in down here at the bottom. Anytime you feel like it, you can pick those up and move them with the click of your mouse. And also those three dots right there might come in handy. It lets you duplicate a slide. If you spend a lot of time building one and you don't want to recreate it on the next one, that's a good choice. And also lets you get rid of a slide that you don't want from your slideshow. All right, at the top here, you have a preview button. Once you get a few slides in, you're going to want to click that preview button button to see what's going on. When you're done, you'll be ready to share. Download is a way that you can get that video um, and move it someplace else, not on the cloud or on the web. And you can also, with this button right here, add a collaborator to your project so multiple people can work together on the same project. Let's look over here on this side. There are only four tabs, and I like the simplicity there very much. Uh, this button right here does let you go to the full screen editor. I'm not going to use that right now, so I have access to all of my tabs. Um, this is the layout screen, and basically there are just four choices here, which is nice to have limited choices. So this is a full screen slide right here. Split screen, as you can see, gives you two different colors on your slide, uh, a caption, and then a title and text. The themes uh, are a, a variety of different colors, and choosing a theme will change not only the font, but also the transition between slides. So it'll really give your video a different look depending on which one of these you choose. Once you choose a particular theme, you can also change the color scheme. So I could go with something purple rather than blue here, and you can see that changed all of my slides to purple. There is a resize window, and if you are going to share this um, video on Instagram. You might want to make it a square video. For the purposes of using with students and using with Chromebooks, we want to stick with widescreen because that looks the best. And finally, there is a music tab. And once we start building our video, you'll see that it will place a song in there for us and we can go back and change to some other music. You can, in fact, add your own music to your video. Um, if you choose to do that, you will need music that's accessible that is an MP3. All right, let's start adding some things to the slide so you can see how that works. So text is just what it says it is. And let's add a new slide in. And you can see it follows the slide that I just created. It'll always come in that particular order. I can choose video and you can see if I click on video it's going to automatically start looking um, in at my machine here for an mp4 those are the only type of videos that you can add to a spark video movie so if your students are using a Chromebook um, they won't be able to make a video so you'll be interested to know that you can now add video and pictures that you take with your Chromebook into an Adobe Spark movie. You didn't used to be able to do this, um, but now the format style is correct. So the way to do that is to click the plus sign, choose video, and then you're going to upload your own video. So now um, it used to land in the downloads folder. Video now lands in a folder called camera. And so I'm going to choose this video that I shot just a couple of seconds ago. And you can crop the video here, like you can take the beginning and the end off of it. And then click save and it's going to put that video into your Adobe Spark movie. All right, and there's my video in there. And now you can also add pictures that you've taken. So now I'm going to choose a photo. I'm going to go back to the word upload and then again it's in camera and here's my image that I wanted to upload and there's a picture that I took with my Chromebook camera. Again you can make it smaller or bigger here and we're all set. So if we push play There's my video, and there's 
use my photo. Uh, let's put a photo in here. When you click photos, there are a lot of choices over here. Let's look at those really quickly. You can, of course, upload a photo from your device. Find free photos. We're going to come back there because that is a really nice resource. Um, Creative Cloud and Lightroom are probably not going to be super useful for you unless you have one of those types of accounts. Dropbox the same way. But you'll see down here Google Drive and Google Photos. So connecting to Drive, you can have your students gather the photos that they want to use and the information they want to use in a folder on Google Drive. And once they click Connect to Drive, they will quickly and easily be able to access everything that they want to put in their video. Again, here you can also connect your um, Spark to your Google Photos, and that's another great resource. But let's look at these because these are fabulous. So these are um, a part of the Spark platform. Let's look for some whale sharks. And you will see that there are a lot of images as we go down here that I can choose from for my video. Not all of them are whale sharks, so you do want to use a little bit of caution there. And it will choose how the photo goes onto my slide. I can click the edit pencil here and make the photo smaller or larger with the plus and minus sign if I don't like how the photo fit onto the slide. The next thing I can do for my slides is I can add voiceover. And there's a record button here. Whale sharks aren't really whales. They're actually the world's largest fish. As you can see, it adjusted the time for um, my audio right there. I can play it. Whale sharks aren't really whales. They're actually the world's largest fish. And you can hear in the background there that um, Spark has already picked some music for me, which again, you definitely can change. Okay, so I've added some text to this slide and I wanted to show you that you can, once you add the text to a slide, you can use the little hand there, grab it, pick it up, and it'll make some suggestions uh, for where it thinks you might like to set that text down. And now I'm ready to add an image to this slide and I can do that with the plus sign just like I did before. Any images that you use um, from Spark Video will end up creating a credit on this page right here. So you'll see that there is um, credit given for those photos on the final page of the video. And also you can add your own credits and encourage your students to credit their um, work where they got their work here on this page as well. And then finally, when you think your video is done, which you know this one really isn't, but let's pretend. Um, let's click preview, see what it looks like. Whale sharks aren't really whales. They're actually the world's largest fish. All right. Um, to close out a preview mode, you go to the X. And now I'm back in edit mode here. Uh, and I could choose to go over and look at the music tab and maybe change the particular music. You can, there's lots of ones to choose from over here. But when I'm finished with my work and ready to share it with someone, I click that share button and I click the word publish. You do need to um, give it some kind of a title. And um, I generally do this. And click create the link. And once you have a link, which will take just a minute to generate. Once you have a link, um, that can be shared back with the teacher or it can be shared directly to Google Classroom. Okay, so we have our link created. I can just copy that and I can send that to the teacher from a student point of view. Or um, you as the teacher, of course, can connect with Classroom. And when you click that Classroom link, it is going to um, open up Google Classroom and generate a list of your classes so that you can pick and choose which class you would like to share that with. And to navigate back to the home page so you can start a new project, you go up here and it's kind of hidden until you um, hover over it. But you go up to the SP for Spark and you are back at your home page and ready to start a new project.